The world around us emits radiation naturally. This natural radiation due to air, rocks, soil, water, vegetation is called background radiation because it's there in the background. There are these alpha and beta decays occurring. The most common source of background radiation is a gas released from the ground called radon. Because the radiation from radon can be higher than safe levels, people often test for this gas using kits that they place in their basement. But you might be wondering, how do we test for radiation? How do we detect it? Well, radiation can be measured using a Geiger-Muller tube. So here's what that looks like. You've got this tube with a gas inside and a positively charged rod, which connects to a counting circuit. So here's how it works. When a decay occurs nearby, this radioactive emission is moving really fast and it enters the GM tube. It slams into one of these gas molecules and it ionizes that gas molecule. So what's released? An electron gets kicked off because it just got hit so hard. Now that electron is negatively charged and it's attracted to the positively charged plate. So in effect, this free electron produces a current that is then registered by the counting circuit. So by counting the number of emissions that are collected in the tube, this GM tube indicates the number of decays that occur. These readings, though, they fluctuate. And the reason is because decay is probabilistic. So sometimes you get a bunch coming out at once, and sometimes there's not very many. It's just like rolling dice. Sometimes you get a lot of sixes or a lot of ones when you roll a bunch of dice, and sometimes there aren't any ones that show up. So there's two ways to account for this fluctuation. First, you have to perform at least three trials, and then you average the data together. And secondly, you have to conduct each trial for a long period of time, at least 100 seconds for the background count. So this is how GM tubes work.